Boxing from the International Boxing Federation Super Flyweight Championship of the World. Your inspector for the IBF at ringside is Bob Lee Jr. Your three judges doing all the scoring from Houston, Texas, David McCullough, from Virginia Beach, Virginia, Jim Trailer, and from Copenhagen, Denmark, Torben Hansen. Your referee in charge of this afternoon's main event, ladies and gentlemen, from Houston, Texas, he is referee Barry Yates. And now, my good friends, fasten your seat belts. It's time for the fist to fly. Introducing the principals first. Boxing to my left, out of the blue corner. He's the challenger. Undefeated as a professional with 23 consecutive wins. 17 of those wins coming by knockout. Wearing the black trunks with the red trim. Weighing in at eight stones, three pounds. 115 pounds, originally out of Lagos, Nigeria, now living and training in the boxing capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada, managed by the famous Billy Baxter. Ladies and gentlemen, the current North American Boxing Federation champion, I give you Kid Akeem Adafawashi. Championship of the world. has been pumped to a limit to get ready for this one. As the champion, Robert Kiroga, fights the challenger, Kit Akeem, as they both get ready to go for 12 rounds in the World Championship in the IBF Junior Bantamweight Division. That's how I thought we had Mike Tyson in the ring with the noise being made there. I tell you what, there was a lot of action, and as a matter of fact, both fighters try to get to each other before the bell rings. Barry Yates showing a little of that foot speed of his own. And there's the bell, and we're underway finally. You can see the height and reach advantage of the challenger, Kid Akeem Early. I mean, as we say, uh, Sam, that we see uh, Kuroga has to get in down below. He tried to come forward. A long lefty, languid left going out there from Kid Akeem. Robert Kiroga, 21 years of age, fought one of the most classic fights I have seen against Ramon Medal, another San Antonio. As they fought for the USBA title, it went 12 grueling rounds in December of 89 and was named as the fight of the year by the USBA that year. A great, great fight. If this one is even half what that one is, we're in for a great day. You see Kuroga. Kenny King taking most of those punches on the elbow. Yeah, Robert Kuroga not being dominated at all by this Taller bean pole opponent. He's determined to get in there, push back, get those punches through. Good a daunting point. prospect here, Sam, for Akeem. The crowd, not with him in any way, it's with the other guy. He's got to hold himself calm, really get going. Anna Fawasi at 115, Kiroga at 115. Both weighing in identical. Anna Fawasi, fifth in the IBF, fifth also in the WBA and the WBC. So he does carry some very good credentials coming in today type of fight, Sam, where the challenger here has got to steal himself, hold those nerves, 
cool himself down, think what he's going to do, not be overwhelmed by the other guy or the crowd. When a challenger comes to the hometown of the champion, he literally has to come in. And you talk about overwhelm. He has to just overwhelm the champion if he hopes to get the decision. Now, knockout's a different story. Well, Robert Kuroga said that when he fought in Italy not so long ago. He went to Belcastro's hometown as a champ and escaped with his life just by the skin of his teeth. He said, actually, in his reports to us, the crowd really lifted his opponent, so he knows what it's like. There are some great punches being thrown, folks. Kiroga slipping inside. Kid Akeem getting some punches over the top. And both landing with regularity. Warning for a hold on the challenger. Both fighters again. Good left hands thrown by both. You see the time of round one. Kid King was languishing on the ropes early on in the round. Took a lot of punishment for Kiroga, but now would like to keep it right where it is, and that's in the center. He does not want to be on those ropes. Akeem, though, learning to punch his way out there. He got stuck in, he let go of a couple of good rides, Sam. Team known to be a good puncher in either hand. And there's the bell to end a very good first round. Well, the champion's round, no doubt. So Kiroga, who took the fight right at the challenger early on, scoring with some punches, settles into his corner. Joe Lopez will be the main man in the corner. Beto Martinez will be working outside of the ropes. Good friend from Tucson. As Kiroga, you see him being looked at in the corner now. Well, the Kiroga camp must be very, very pleased with that round. I think uh, the worst fears didn't happen. Their guy was not pushed away. He was able to get in because he's faster at this stage. Spring here, there we see these punches. Putting the uppercut through as he comes in, keeping the pressure on Kid Akeem. I have seen Kiroga fight, quite obviously, as I've already mentioned. But I'm wondering how much he does fight this well, how much of a lift when he stepped in with his crowd behind him, and how much that's going to carry over now that the whole first round is behind you. Now he's got to fight and fight a very much taller and longer reaching opponent. As we see here, Kuroga coming forward, trying to put the pressure once again on Robert uh, Kid Akeem, sorry. Akeem's got to cool himself down. He's got to step away here, get himself some time, hold himself back. Otherwise, he's going to ship more heavy punches all the time. Kiroga, again, you see that disadvantage of size. He's got the duck under. That time, after an extended right hand, he followed right over the top of the left. If you watch Sam when Akeem lets go with his left, he drops his right guard. He's open, open all wide all the time. Get Akeem trying to dig those punches to the body. Now, being the height advantage that Kid Akeem has, he almost has to double over from the waist so much to dig something to the body. If Kuroga's ready, he comes over the top with a punch, and Kid Akeem's wide open. And Kiroga just going right at the middle right now. Akeem just allowing himself to be out, thought out, thought at this stage. He's got to do something, otherwise he's not going to last much longer. Not indeed. Of the 17 wins by Robert Kiroga in the white, 11 have been by knockouts. Of the 23 straight wins by Kid Akeem, he's put down 16 of them. The cheer for Robert in the background. A punch straying low that time for the challenger. Akeem getting the measure occasionally the last minute or so, Sam, but there's not much snap in those punches at this stage. Trying to go through with the uppercut, trying to jab the shipping punches once again from Robert Kuroka. Akeem, of course, the 15-year-old who didn't make the Olympic Games in 84, Sam. Too young, came here, couldn't fight. This time, he says, I'm not going to weigh empty-handed. Had to be such a disappointment in 84 to come represent Nigeria. Quite obviously, he didn't get a chance to fight. Now as a pro, a chance at a world title here in San Antonio. But Kiroga knows that it's his to keep and win again. Kid Akeem trying to loop those uppercuts. 
Hiroga throwing one of his own, and now Hiroga warned for low blows. Well, low blows are always a possibility when you have this great discrepancy in height here, Sam. And Kuroga's lunging, trying to go through, but not quite making it. By the way, to keep you up to date, three judges score here in Texas. On a 10-point must system, the judge, the referee does not score. There is a no standing eight count here in Texas, but a three knockdown rule is in effect for the title fight as the two fighters close the second round with a flurry. Well, Robert Kuroga ran once again, but I thought towards the end there, Akeem getting a little bit of rhythm. Just a little bit of hope there for him. Well, what I thought he did, Robin, a little bit more near the end of round two was after he throws the uppercut quickly out, and then he comes from another angle at Kiroga, again using the height and the reach advantage that he possesses. Any it's fighter who's got so much height and reach advantage shouldn't allow himself to be drawing like that. He should never. be able to pick away, push away, keep that guy at bay, foil him, probe him, annoy him. But he's allowing Robert Kiroga with his aggression his busy, busy approach to get in there and pressure him so he can't get his own punches off. Boy, Kiroga's like a caged animal. He's been off his stool at least 15, 20 seconds prior to the start of every round. You see him dancing, trying to get himself ready, waving that right hand as if said, here comes the big one. And this is round three. Kid Akeem in the black with the red. In the solid white, the champion. Here's Robert Kiroga. He once again with all that reach advantage, swinging wildly and missing. It would be interesting, Robin, if we had the facilities to have done so this afternoon on a punch meter to find out exactly how many punches Robert Kiroga is going to throw in this fight. There will be a ton. I guess there are a heck of a lot there, Sam, the first two rounds. Kid Akeem. Threw just a slight left uppercut to let Kiroga know that it's there. No snap in those punches, though, Sam. They're going through the motions, but there's no snap, crackle, or pop in those. There's the left hand by both fighters. The uppercut again, again by Kid Akeem. Akeem turning his body more, if you notice. Turning himself sideways on. Less of a target for Robert Kiroga. And at 115 and a string being, it is less of a target indeed. Look at him, it's oh, it's a big cut. Big cut over the Kuroga's left eye. Yes, it is, a huge cut. A big cut over the left eye of Kiroga in the third round, and this could be a major turn of this fight as Kid Akeem stays right on top of him and goes right after that eye. Well, it's real nasty, Sam. When we see towards camera again, there's a real bad cut. Oh, my. A real... Thrashing blow, looked innocuous, but it came across and split that eye right open. Well, Beto Martinez over in the corner, the champion, Robert Quiroga, is really going to have a tough, tough chore now. It appears to be on the outside of the eye, not on the lid, but we'll have to wait till we get a little closer look at it to make sure. And also, it is low enough on the eyebrow, that it is not trickling into his eye, referring to the blood. Well, Akeem is certainly working on it, Sam. You can yes. see that now. He's turned himself away, turned himself into it, getting those punches going through on that eye. Credit Kiroga. He has not backed up a step. He can't do much else, Sam. He's got to keep going. He's been shipping blows now. He can't see well out of that left eye, I guess. There's a lot of blood going around it. Always difficult for a fighter. Yeah, you can see Kiroga's lost his rhythm, lost his distance there. They're swinging, but they're not going through. Just like Akeem was in the first two rounds. Now, we must also, at the end of the round, watch the referee and the judges carefully. This could have been caused by a head fight. I don't think it was. Nope. But the referee and the judges will confer. And at the end of the round, if nothing is said, it was a clean blow that opened the cut. And that obviously takes it away from a possible technical draw that does not reach the sixth round. Well, that can give it to, Kuro, uh, to the new champion, Kid Akeem, if that's the decision they're going to make. And there's the bell Whoa. in the third, and you've got to give that to the challenger. He came on as Kid Akeem really took it to Kiroga. Let's go into that corner and watch this. Amazing when a fighter sends his blood there, Sam. They really pile on the pressure. That really turned it around for Kid Akeem. Here we see in Robert Kiroga's corner. They're working on that now. The ring doctor's over there. That'll be a real good look. Now, you see the importance of how this cut. The man in the ring now is Beto Martinez. 
The man outside the ring is now Joe Lopez, who was just reversed. Yeah, we saw it. That was it. A good right. Great right punch. That was the one which did it. Kiroga opening with that cut right there. Full mark to our director there. there they picked up that punch. There oh. it was, sweeping right across. It could well have been, Sam, the actual webbing on the glove as the hand came past. Just picked it open. Robert picking Kiroga. Dan Shoemaker, our producer. Skip Hill, our director in the truck, giving you those pictures. Bob Bossy with some audio with us throughout the day. Well, here we go then. Kid Akeem running out there. He's got pants in his feet now. He's two difficult rounds. The third round was his. And now he couldn't wait. And now they're going to get some tape. Well, Squared away on the glove of the challenger here. Maybe the referee heard what we were saying. We thought it might have been the tape of the webbing which did that cut. Across the way, Miguel Diaz. Rich Landers, one of the local promoters here in San Antonio, helping the career of Robert Kiroga, hollering from behind us to get inside. As again, they secure the tape on the glove of the right hand. The one that did indeed open up the cut, and they did not confer with the judges nor the referee. So as we showed you on the replay, they too realized it was a good punch by Kid Akeem that opened the cut. Yeah, totally legal blow there, Sam. Absolutely. So Kid Akeem's now got one heck of a handicap to keep up. Ahead on the first two rounds, he lost the third. Sorry, behind on the first two rounds, up on the third. Robert Kiroga still in our car, slightly ahead here, but he's got a long way to go with that difficult wound on his face. Hooking left hands by both fighters. Kiroga having to fight uphill against the taller challenger. Throwing the right over the top, catching the challenger, Kid Akeem on the shoulder. Kiroga hadn't seen him fight before, Sam. Does he have a history of cuts? Because Akeem doesn't have, appear to have any history of cuts. He does not cut, I didn't think, as much as we've seen here early. He does with an accumulation of punches. So that must have been a very good blow to open up that cut this early. Both fighters, 21. We made mention the Olympic prowess of that of Kid Akeem. Akeem complaining that was low. 65 and nine, an amateur record, before turning pro at the age of 17 for Robert Kiroga. Both fighters, by the way, are fathers as they head for Father's Day. Naomi is the wife of Robert Kiroga. Their daughter is Crystal Marie, while son Akeem Jr to Kid Akeem and Sharon as their men fight in the ring here for the title here today in San Antonio. Kid Akeem really picking some Ooh, punches here. Rocking Robert Kiroga then. I don't think Robert Kiroga can see much on that side of his face where the cut is. Which is a pity. I think we were in for a real cracking fight. And Kiroga's back on Kid Akeem. He tried a little rope-a-dope there. Big Whoa. right hand again by Kid Akeem. Boy, he's just nailing that left eye. Kiroga's having to be so conscious of keeping the left hand, trying to guard the left eye, that he's not able to jab in and throw the right behind it. Well, Kim trying to do his uppercuts. I think he's doing better just to throw in those hands right onto the face there of Robert. That crowd anxious for Robert Kiroga to get back in the fight. Kid Akeem has definitely taken the momentum away here. Closing seconds of the fourth round. Yeah, Kiroga trying to faint there, but not making it off. Akeem saw it coming, managed to turn away. Akeem is going to come away with another round here. If he keeps throwing punches, and he has, and he has come back to back with a third and fourth solid round. And in particular, opening up the cut in the third of the eye of the champion. Although somehow that you cut is held there, Sam. It didn't spurt. He's taken the blow. It stayed together. They're going to have to work on it every round. There we see it. All credit to the camp over there. It didn't really burst. It's just there, but there's a second cut now, yes. just above the eyelid. One on the eyelid and one on the eyebrow. You can see him going right back to work. I don't want to tell you, folks, if you've never had this coagulant put in a cut before, you have not lived. You think McCurecomb stings, folks. Why do you get this in your eye? All right, that brings tears to your eyes, Sam, for sure. Well, right now, Kid Akeem has brought some tears to Robbie Kiroga's hope of 
maintaining his world title. As he has opened up some cuts over the left eye. And now Barry Yates is now warning the Kuroga corner for some talk out of the corner. Wants him to keep it a little quieter over there for some reason. Well, in between rounds, the sound of noise was Roger Mayweather being presented, the former world champ. He's in the, key, the uh, Kid Akeem camp, getting a big hurrah from the crowd. Here we go into round five. Kid Akeem inching slowly ahead, I would think, here. Two difficult rounds at the beginning. Came through round three, came through round four. Robert Kuroga shipping punches under heavy weather, under heavy attack because of that eye. I think the momentum is still with Kid Akeem, giving him the fourth round on our unofficial card of the scheduled 12 rounder. I'm sure the butterflies in the stomach of Kid Akeem, those first two rounds when the crowd were behind Robert yeah. Kuroga, were a lot to do with it. He didn't quite know what to do. The noise was there. Robert Kuroga comes in again, tries to get those punches through. This Not is, much damage. This is the Robert Kuroga of all. Watch as he tries to uppercut, but watch the body work if he gets inside. Kid Akeem trying to keep him at bay. And uppercut. It's been a big weapon for Kid Akeem today. Very few really scored, though, Sam. He's been trying and trying. That one actually got through. It's not been successful, though he obviously likes that punch. Good left hand by the champion. Garoga backing up Kid Akeem for a moment. Garoga with a big right hand over the top. Kid Akeem back against the ropes where he doesn't want to be. Look at the body work of the champion. Oh. Kid Robert Kuroga can take your punch too, Sam. He does indeed. Kid Akeem, like a snake, lashing out with a punch. Barry Yates, the referee, is watching us very closely, realizing that Kid Akeem is letting Robert punch. But Kid Akeem has got to throw some punches before Barry steps in there. This is a Muhammad Ali on the rope business. Take them all, wear them down. A little rope-a-dope, if you will, for sure. Kid Akeem now has a little puffiness under his left eye. Forty seconds to go in round five. Kiroga has come back to capture this round by just being the aggressor. I think uh, Keen here, Sam, has got to find more angles, have more thought. Just keep away. He doesn't need to take these punches. Not at all. He's torturing himself. Bravo, bravo. He's using that elbow, that bent arm. The referee's warned him a couple of times. He's using that elbow to keep Kuroga away. It's a good weapon if he can get away with it. And the key word that you use there, he has been warned once. A second warning, and then, of course, a point deduction could be rather disastrous in this fight, the way it is going at the moment. <laughs> As Robert Kiroga, Kid Akeem battle out here and heading for the sixth round of a scheduled 12 rounder at the Hemisphere Arena in San Antonio, Texas. Sam Smith along with Robert Welch. And we are delighted that we have been able to join you on a Saturday afternoon that has seen championship fighting. Welcome Nikita getting his championship retained in the IBF Junior Featherweight over Hurley Sneed. Took him all 12 rounds to do it. And this one is progressing towards round six, also set for 12. Well, this is World Championship Boxing back in San Antonio, Sam, after a long, long break. They say the homecoming for Robert Kiroga because he's never fought as a world champion before until today. Robert's back, world titles back to San Antonio. And again, Kiroga off of that stool early again. Beto Martinez, who has been working on his cut, satisfied, there's no problem there. And this is round six. The challenger, Kid Akeem, Ana Fawasi. And Robert Kiroga of San Antonio in the white, the champion. Ana Fawasi fighting out of the gymnasiums out in Las Vegas that houses, as we mentioned, a former champion, Robert Mayweather, who's working in the corner with him today. All the time here, Robert Kiroga must be thinking to himself, I've got to do something because this eye may not hold out forever. I've got to get in, try and put this guy down because I don't think I've got 12 rounds left. Kiroga, as a matter of fact, now keep in mind, this is only his 17th fight. It's been 12 rounds four times. 
Adafawasi has been 12 rounds only once. So quite obviously, if they should go the distance, it would be the more foreign ground to the NABF champion. As a matter of fact, he won the title, or defended it in 12 rounds the second time he had to defend. Well, here we have a change of uh, emphasis here. We now got Akeem, who has Robert Kuroga traps on the ropes. And the blood now starting to pour a little more freely from that cut again on the left eye. So I think Akeem is saying, well, anything you can do, I can do better. I'm going to get you trapped against the ropes. Robert Kuroga, the last minute or so, has lost his rhythm. He seems to be coming into Akeem, meeting that bent elbow. Akeem forcing him back a little bit. The fight Akeem should have done from the beginning. Akeem putting those punches together, pushing forward, putting that elbow into Robert Kuroga's nose. In fact, the eye of Robert Kuroga, Sam, is now bursting open again. There's blood coming out of it. We haven't seen that since the beginning. We keep using the word cut. There are plural. There are two cuts, one on the eyebrow and one on the eyelid. And we have now reached the sixth round. Also, I think Kid has got a little mouth bleed somewhere. We can see blood on his list most of the time. Robert Kuroga digging deep there. 50 seconds left to go in the sixth round, halfway through. Scheduled 12 rounder. Kid Akeem now starting to again use that left jab a little more. Right snick through there, Sam, right onto Robert Kuroka's eye. Neither puncher being able to throw the big bombing punches we saw early in the fight. An accumulation of punches, certainly, by both. Robert Kuroka looking a real bloody mess in this round here. The worst we've seen him since the round the cut appeared. Akeem coming forward. Since he can do something here, Rainey in those blows. No, nice little, sorry, nice little friendly tap on the pants there from Kid Akeem to a guy who said, you're a chicken. I think after five rounds in the ring, he says, you're not so much chicken, you're a good fighter too. Well, I tell you, if he's a chicken, he's one of those oh, mad roosters because he's well, fighting well tonight. But with the, the Robert Kuroga corner here, they're trying to patch it up. You can see the pain, Sam, as they put that stuff on him. He's shrieking in there, not nice at all. Robert Kuroga in difficult waters here, Sam. You know what was interesting as the round card girl went by the corner of Kiroga, almost in unison, almost all of the card people looked up to see what round it was as I think they've been so concerned about stopping the cut, or at least the bleeding from the cuts, that they've kind of lost perspective on where it is in the round. And three of the four people working in the corner over there all looked to the card to see what round it was, and we're heading for the seventh. Yeah, they're in deep concentration over there. In fact, Sam, you can see they have managed to staunch that cut this time. There's still a little trickle coming out as we come out now for the next round. Round seven it is then. These two fighting cocks take it up again. Kid Akeem in the flashy black and red trunks. Robert Kuroga from San Antonio, Texas, in the white feathery trunks, I think we can call them, Sam. Now, keep in mind that Kid Akeem is a champion of sorts, the North American Boxing Federation title. He won that in April, a seventh-round knockout over Cesar Martinez. Has defended that title three times, but now steps up to the IBF. And the junior bantamweight scheduled for 12 today against the champion, Kiroga. Hiroga trying to dig inside. Kid Akeem trying to loop the punches. Matter of fact, with that reach advantage for Akeem, he gets actually too close to do any damage with those punches. He's trying to get a rhythm going, Sam. He's trying to throw that left deep and then come across with the right. There we saw it. Measure up the left, come across with the right. He's getting through onto that eye quite regularly now. He is indeed. Well, we've now gone past the six rounds, Mark Sam, so we're into uncharted territory. There's going to be a winner here. We can't have any funny decisions. We're going to get a, a retention or a new champ. Yep. Akeem is very difficult with that shoulder arm, bent arm tactic because he's so tall that Robert Kuroga runs into the hand without Akeem really trying to do it. There we are, we see it again. And the only way for Kuroga to get a good shot at him is to go quickly left, but unfortunately that runs right into the right hand. And you don't want to do that. So he is at a kind of a no-win situation with that turn body of Akeem.
A bloody mess is the champion right now, Robert Kiroga. However, there is some blood on Kid Akeem as well. He has been bleeding from the lip since round one. No problem there, however. Well, I saw the working on his left eye in the corner in the break. Little skirmish going on outside the ring as momentarily halted the concentration inside. For well, the fans, anyway. <laughs> Keen there, crouching forward, leaning down, pulling that bent arm out. He protects himself very well. Looking at that right, the left eye of Robert Kiroga, and that's his target. There we saw it again. Throw the right hand out, flash on it. Kiroga throwing a punch over the top. Again, Kid Akeem ducking in, trying to get those body punches, and then, as Robin pointed out, coming back for the right is round number seven's in the book now. Well, that's an Akeem round on my card. Ooh. That's going to be a tough one. That was uh, one of the, I, I have to agree with you. I think I do. 10-9 on him, which means he has now won three out of the last four on our cards, and officially, possibly with Kiroga coming up and getting the fifth round when he came back and retaliated. A good look at Kiroga. Again, still concerned over the cuts, but not as much as early on. Well, you're on our card, Sam, we got uh, Kid Akeem ahead by one point at the moment. Right. Got a quick running total there, 76-77. And there you get a good look at him. Now that, with a probably 75 cents, gets you a cup of coffee anywhere in America, probably, this scorecard, <laughs> because the judges are the guys that officially will score it at the end of 12, if indeed we go that far. And Robert Kiroga, anxious once again, Sam as ever. He's there, rearing to go. Kid Akeem is always lolling back in his seat, taking his time. Well, we seem to be taking up round eight where Kid Akeem left off in round seven. He's picking off Robert Kiroga. Robert coming forward. He's also lost his rhythm a bit. He's not quite sure what to do here. Akeem is managed to settle himself down. Crowd also stopped roaring a bit, Sam. I think that's uh, turning yep. Akeem's, Akeem's favor. He, he knows he's got something now. Kiroga trying to get him back in it with a combination. You know, we made mention early on, even though Kiroga creeps towards the ropes, that the place that uh, Kid Akeem wants to fight this fight is right where they are right now, and that's the center of the ring. Use that height, use that reach advantage. Do not get trapped on the ropes where he got himself in some trouble early. Well, there's nothing wrong when Akeem actually gets Robert on the ropes because he's able to pummel him from that extra height. Put those blows in, hold him still, and get a good, clear shot of that eye. That's what boxing about, Sam, is a brutal sport. If you've got the guy in trouble, you try and finish him off. And there's not a lot of excuse me passed out in any of the four corners of this ring today, that's for sure. Kiroga coming back with a digging left hand. All of these punches being caught on the glove, though, of Kid oh. Akeem. He comes back with a combination oh. of his own. Yep, referee saw it once again. I saw that elbow go right in on the face there, Robert Kiroga. On his other eye, on his right eye. Digging left hands there of Kid Akeem. Kiroga throwing the punch over the top. Well, that left eye of Kiroga has taken some punishment. Two good headshots there from Kid Akeem. Whatever he's trying here, Robert Kiroga, it almost seems as though Kid Akeem has decided to give him a working over stamp. It's suddenly turning in, in Akeem's favor. He yeah. survived that storm. Kiroga has lost his snap. He's trying hard, but it's not coming out. And Kid Akeem again exchanges. A good punch by Kiroga. I think that was an off-balance by Akeem, but he did get hit. Kiroga's on top of it. Fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round, and there's time. Now Kid Akeem comes back to get it back in his favor near the end of the round. 
What an exchange at the end of round eight. And Ken Akeem, who might have lost it, came back, I think, to secure a round again. Yeah, he's a deceptive fighter there. He's taking those shots. They look as though they're doing damage. They're not doing much at all, Sam. He's biding his time. Those long, lanky arms taking up much of the pressure. Those levers taking on this percussion coming out from Robert Kuroga. Over in the Kuroga corner, once again, they're working on that eye. Robert Kuroga, he's really trying, Sam. Beto Martinez may be the most important man as you see the exchange here. A clubbing left hand and then a, actually a pretty good right hand there. That was the one that almost knocked Kitty Keem down. Kuroga knew he was in trouble. Kitty Keem did too. Regrouped on the ropes and then came back with a combination of his own. Yep, here's that rope adobe. Here we see these gloves going in. Yep. Gloves, gloves, gloves. One or two just going through, but nothing really happening there. They're just glancing past them. Here we go then. Crowd really getting up to this. Well, Kiroga off the stool early as we start the ninth round. They're still cleaning up the corner, meanwhile, across the way of Kitty Keith. So these two bands of weights or fighting cocks, they're really giving us a good show tonight, Sam. They're really turning on the agony of the professional fighter. We're seeing the cuts, we're seeing the bruises, we're seeing the triumphs, we're seeing all the effort which goes into being a world champ and taking the, tri the title away from the world, ti and world title holder. Keep in mind, both of these athletes are 21 years old and with 23 and 0 for Akeem, 17 and 0 for Robert Kiroga, the sky is still the limit for both. Yep, I'm sure we're going to see more of these, whoever wins or loses tonight, Sam. They'll be back. For Ogre's eye, they can't staunch this now. It's, it's weeping as he gets into the ring for each round. Cedric Kushner Productions in cooperation with Mnet Sports, proud to bring you championship boxing from San Antonio, Texas. Robert Kiroga against Kid Akeem. This is the IBF Junior Bantamweight Championship. And uh, Kiroga in the white is having a real battle with a challenger today. If you watch here, Kiroga is moving to his right all the time, Sam. Now he's trying to move away. And actually, because of Akeem's long levers, he's letting le the, the lever come around onto that eye, which is the problem. He should be doing the opposite, moving to his left. You see the blood streaming down from the eye of Kiroga for still another round. Unofficially on our cards at ringside, the champion's behind. And Kid Akeem, the way he's fighting right now, wants to keep him that way. Yep, Kid Akeem certainly got a nasty cut in the mouth there, Sam. We can see he's got thick blood on his mouth. He's got a, a real sneaky cut inside there. Akeem pouring on the agony here, pouring on those punches. Robert Kiroga's face again, Sam, they're looking nasty. Just a bloody mess. Kiroga dug a right hand inside. Anna Fawasi, of course, throwing the punch over the top. Here comes Kiroga back again. Half a minute to go, round nine. Wow, just a couple of punches going through, hitting that spot. Left hand of Kiroga, flipping the head of Kid Akeem backwards. Wow. Good hand combination by the champion. Although they're not doing much, Sam, they're just hitting those gloves, which are being held just by Kid Akeem. Oy. Close round, very close, close round. Got to give it an even round. Got to be. Neither fighter really getting advantage over the other. Kind of a give and take round. The way this is going, Sam, I've got a feeling we're going to end up with a draw. I can just feel it in my bones here. I don't think either fighter's got enough left to wallop the other, but both fighters are very close. The draw would mean that Robert Kuroga retains his title. Yes. I'm putting my head on the block here, but we've got three rounds to go. I can feel this is a draw situation, Sam. I don't know about you. And it's also one of those situations you can see that a rematch would probably be even better than what we're seeing today. Yeah. If that's possible. Let's keep in mind, though, there are three international judges that will be judging this fight today. The referee, Barry Yates, does not figure in the judging. John Trailer from Norfolk, Virginia. 
Torben Hansen from Copenhagen, Denmark, <laughs> and Dave McCullough from Houston are the three judges, and all have been around the block. Well, Kid Akeem once again, Sam, long time coming out the ring. I think the Akeem corner here, they got ice on the floor, lots of things on the floor, almost playing for time, it seems. They're still getting some ice out of there. Matter of fact, there's one right near the center of the ring. They have not spotted yet. Barry Yates wants to make sure it's all cleaned up. Now he's saying, get it clean. Motioning both fighters over in the white corner. Kid Akeem patiently waiting for something to happen here. Now Barry Yates is satisfied that the canvas is ready. Now keep in mind the time has been turned off here. So now as he signals to the timekeeper, it is resumed. So it is a normal three-minute round with just the stoppage there to get it cleaned up. So again, round 10 after a possible even round nine as the champion Kiroga in the white battles it out with Kit Akeem here in the black. Kit Akeem certainly swallowing a lot of blood there, Sam. Now this does debilitate you. It's hard for us to see what's happening, but you can see all the time on his lips, he's got a large amount of very sticky red blood there. Not nice to have that in your mouth. The wheat in the flag as the fight goes on. One of those factors we can't estimate at this stage. So we have both fighters here with a cut. Kid Akeem inside the mouth. Robert Kuroga on the outside of the face. Into round 10 here, Robert Kuroga fighting for his life as the champ. Very close fight at this stage. Looping right hand inside by Kid Akeem, trying to use that elbow again to push Kiroga against the ropes. Keep in mind that Anna Fawasi has been warned already once today for that elbow up. And the way this fight is going with the scoring, that could be a devastating blow of a point should be deducted from either fighter here. Still unofficially a slight lead by the challenger on our unofficial card here at ringside. And judging back to the other championship fight we had earlier today, we were pretty close on the scoring on that one. Not bad, according to the cards. Both fighters just trying to just try to find what openings there, but not really loading up with any big punches right now. Keep in mind, they're in the 10th round of a 12-rounder, though. The pattern's always been, Sam. Robert Kuroga gives a few blows. You think Akeem is on his way out. He comes back and does exactly the same thing again. Right hand by Kuroga, slipping over the top. Comes out flating with the left, got the left hand in. They're doubling up on the right. First time we've seen him do that. A few little pokes, a few little blows. This has been one of those fights almost throughout where one punch turns the fight completely around. The Kid Akeem again. Using that strategy to his advantage. <laughs> He has rope a a bunch today. And there's the bell for round 10. Kiroga, I believe, slipped in and stole the round late. Well, both fighters still looking in good shape apart yes. from the eyes and the cuts. There's still plenty of life left in these two young dogs here. And that ties it down to only one point difference on our card now. Kid Akeem, the challenger, still up. As again, you see the action here in round 10. And there's the right hand. That was a good one by Kiroga. As again, he double left jab and it came over the top. Yep. Kid Akeem now, I think, paid the penalty. He slackened off a little bit, Sam. Slowed down, paid the penalty, just lost that round by a whisker. Well, I think we're in for two torrid rounds coming up now. The penultimate, the 11th round coming up. Two rounds to go in this. IBF Junior Bantamweight title here live from San Antonio, Texas. I'm Robin Welsh and with me, Sam Smith. Sam. 
Well, the home crowd, Robert Kiroga's hometown crowd, trying to pump him up as we start the 11th. Well, Robert Kiroga's shorts here, Sam, but they were white when they started. They're a, a beautiful pink shade now. And Barry Yates stopping action momentarily to get some of that coagulant off the side of Robert Kiroga's head. The main reason they do that is not so much that the fighter gets the advantage. The other fighter gets it on his glove. He pokes it in his eyes. He puts it in the other fighter's eyes, and that's not intended where it was supposed to go. There's a lot of steam happening there. And indeed, it is not a pleasant situation. So it's not so much of one fighter getting an advantage over the other. It's just trying to protect both fighters and not and move it away. Kiroga that time slipped a right hand in underneath. Left hand coming over the top. The three judges that we mentioned a moment ago now starting to become a little more antsy on their stools because they are coming close to realizing they have to decide the outcome of a very good tight fight. Well, I think both fighters now realize, Sam, that to, to pull this out of the bag, definitely, we've got to have some real action from one or the other. They've got to really turn it on. It's so close. To retain his title, Robert Kiroga must rein in these blows in the last four and a half minutes. Kitakim knows he's got to take it. Probably the only way I think is he must put down Robert Kiroga once. Exactly. Either knock him out or put him down on his pants to get a 10-8. Kiroga, you see the heart of the little guy. Kid Akeem, no doubt about where his heart is today. Both fighters have been well focused, both have been well trained, and both have worked extremely hard. Punch by Kiroga, backing up Kid Akeem momentarily. Yidiki coming back, throwing that right hand still to that left eye. That has been taken very good care of by Beto Martinez in the Robert Quiroga corner. That was a nasty cut in the third. Sooner the man coming forward in the 11th, Sam is Kitakim. He's pushing Robert Quiroga back. He is. And I tell you one thing, if he does go on to win this 11th round, it could be interesting on the scorer cards as we go to the 12th. We are very, very close here in San Antonio. Robert Kuroga, the champ, is Kid Akeem, the challenger. Closing seconds of the 11th round. Kid Akeem has been very active. Kuroga's come back with some punches of his own. And there's the bell, and we will indeed go to the final three minutes of the world title fight this afternoon. Well, I think, Sam, this is going to be one of those arenas like the Arco in Sacramento. If the champ, Robert Kuroga, doesn't get this, I think we better all jump under the ring because we're going to get a lot of missiles coming in. And it is interesting. It is a 15-minute drive to the airport, a 5 o'clock fight for me, and a 8 o'clock wedding tonight in Dallas, Texas, of my daughter. So this could be interesting. You may be all by yourself, Robert. <laughs> well, do you want the knockout in the ring or the knockout in Dallas? Uh, well, I don't know. I'll have to think about that one. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Well, ring announcer Gordon Wood doing his part. He'll have them on their feet before they get into the center of the ring of this one. There are the particulars. Anna Fawasi against Kiroga, the champion there. Dancing in the ring. There's the bell. They touch gloves. We're underway on the 12th and final round. On even 11th round on our cards. The challenger up by a point on the cards unofficially. This is for all the marbles. Well, we can see that Akeem has in his mind, Sam. He's coming forward. He's throwing those punches. He's getting out of Robert Kiroga. Robert Kiroga trying to back off, trying to hold off. Akeem once again is in the 11th round, being the aggressor, coming forward. Can he get enough blows in? Can he do something? If he can put Robert Kiroga down for one, I'm sure he's going to take this title. It's going to be very, very close all the way here. You can see both fighters still going at it. Tooth and nail in the 12th. Kiroga trying to muster all of the stamina inside of that five foot one body of his. A kid of King towering over him by nearly four or five inches. Looping those big, long left and right arms. Oh, 
The judges, their eyes firmly attached to the fighters. And now Kid Akeem with some tape. And the momentum of the 12th round spoiled for the moment. Second stoppage like this. Oh. The crowd not liking that. We were in full swing there, Sam. I don't think it would have made any difference at this stage of the fight. Tape has been completed. Blood streaming from the eye of the champion, Robert Kiroga. The challenger, Kid Akeem, from Nigeria, fighting out of Las Vegas. Kiroga trying to satisfy the hometown crowd. Hometown crowd a little stunned. Not a lot of noise coming at the moment with only Whoa. half of the round to go. Great combination there from Kid Akeem. Lefts and rights, he's pushing Robert Kiroga across the ring. Robert Kiroga trying to come back, trying to dig in, but not making it. Kid Akeem there with that bent left, pushing it out, falling up by the right occasionally. There we saw it again. Left, right, he's digging those punches in, Sam. Robert Kiroga, that cut is getting worse and worse. He's just going to about make it to the end of 12. There you see it, a minute to go in the 12th and final round. Kid Akeem has done nothing more than to challenge and challenge big time as now the crowd does come alive. Kiroga answers the challenge. Kid Akeem takes the punches and comes out swinging. Half a minute to go in the fight. A real great professional fight this Sam. A tribute to professional boxing. We've seen guys who've come here to work, who've come here to get on with it, who've come here to punch. And these two guys have really done it. Akeem coming forward again. Blood glistening around his lips. Robert Kiroga, the blood going down the side of his face. A real river of blood there. Kiroga trying to put it on. Missing, putting those blows in. We're getting all sorts of missiles coming in, Sam. And the war is just about over. The final punches have been thrown, and it is over in San Antonio. Two game, game challengers have battled stoop and nail for 12 consecutive rounds. And now it rests in the hands of three judges to see if Robert Quiroga maintains his title or if we have a new world champion in the making in Kid Akeem out of Fawasi. You take a look at Anna Fawasi being administered to here by Ace Murata. Across the way, that, of course, is Robert Kiroga. Kiroga, 17-0. 23-0 for the challenger, Kid Akeem, as he came into this fight. And a mass of bodies representing the two camps are in the ring right now. You see the exchange of punches here. Again, a big right hand over the top by Robert Kiroga. A bloody mess since the third round. They worked gallantly on that cut, but Kid Akeem continued to throw that right hand, and it was nothing but a landing area on the left eye. As you take a look at them still working on that cut here at the end of the fight. Robin Welch is up in the ring right now. Robin, can you hear me up there all right? Uh, sure, Sam, I can hear you. There's pandemonium going in the ring here. Well, of course, in San Antonio, they're raising their hometown favorite, Robert Kiroga, over their shoulders in anticipation while this man from Nigeria originally, fighting out of Las Vegas now, that's Kid Akeem, has to wait and see if he has stolen one in the hometown of the champion. So up here, that cut was really bad. Now we're so close, I can see it really very, very deep. I think it's a wonder he kept going. There are two very deep cuts on that eye. The judges have tabulated the cards. The ring announcer, Gordon Ward, is stepping center ring. And the anticipation and the butterflies of these two fighters will soon be over as we will have the announcement of the results of the fight. Up here, Kid Akeem, I think, is complaining about his right hand. I think he may have damaged it during the fight. He's saying to his handlers, it hurts. He's almost got tears in his eyes here. He doesn't know whether he's hurt his hand, won the title, or what at this stage, Sam. It's very, very dramatic for him. So again, as fighters exchange handshakes, Cordialities, and the judges tabulate the card. What happens now? Does Kiroga maintain the title, or is there a new champion? Is there a rematch, possibly, between these two? Let's find out. Gordon Wood with the announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, 
after 12 exciting championship rounds of boxing, I have the decision by judges as follows. Judge Torin Hanson, he scores about 115, 114. Judge David McCullough, he scores about 116, 112, as does Judge Jim Trailer. He too scores about 116, 112 for the winner. And still, the IBF Super Flyweight Champion of the World. his championship. We're getting a uh, shipping a lot of water up here, Sam. We're trying to get Robert Caroga right now. Robert Caroga. So Caroga again gets the attention of the title, and he's headed out of the ring. He's going to get out of the ring here. I think we're going to have trouble getting away with him. Why don't we get hold of Kedekim has lost collapsed. It. Kedekim. Kedekim, Kedekim has actually collapsed. gone down on the ground. He's collapsed. He has collapsed on the ringside. He's gone right down. He's not well at all. So as the champion, Kiroga, leaves, Kid Akeem has collapsed on the ring. The Kid Akeem has gone right down here, Sam. Doctors are right on top of him, checking the pupils. Yeah, he's gone right down here. OK. Sam, it's very difficult up here. Kid Akeem seems to be lying right down here. The doctors don't look very happy at all. A little twitch there coming from his leg. Even the smelling sauce is not getting much of a I think he's exhausted. He's also gone down. Something not right here at all. Robert Kiroga's left the ring. Kid Akeem lying prone here. Doesn't look very nice at all, Sam. 12 pounding rounds. Are these two fighters this afternoon? Hill. And again, the doctors are in the ring with Kid Akeem. Bill Baxter, you're the manager of Kid Akeem. What's the matter over there? Well, I tell you, he swallowed a lot of blood. He was splitting up blood, and he just, like, went down. You think he's just exhausted? I don't know. We don't know right now. It's, it's very worrying, yeah. Yes, it is. OK, Bill, please look after him. Well, the most concern that's going on here in San Antonio, quite obviously, is that for Kid Akeem after he once again well, you heard has Sam lost. There. Sam, I got Bill back to the manager. He said that Kid Akeem, as we thought, swallowed a lot of blood during that fight. He's very exhausted. They're going to get him out of the ring. A tragic end to a great...